Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. Martin, you're meant to be doing building work. When? Like now. Oh, uh, okay then. Okay, this is more like it. Now today, we have got an action-packed day coming up, which is very Ferrari themed. Yeah, we have so much going on. Obviously, Martin and the team from Novus are here, cracking on with the building work. They We've got, indeed. I believe, a kitchen arriving. We do. Fairly we'll, soon. We also have a skip coming, which is something that I think will be a first at the Schmuseum. Um, I don't know, my car's in it. I'm joking. <laughs> I can't do that to my own car, can I? You said it, not me. No, that's true. But yes, we have a skip coming. We've got a kitchen coming, which... The kitchen's here. The <laughs> The kitchen is here right now. The kitchen now. is here, so I uh, guess what else do we go have? That in We've a got some. We mentioned about putting summer tyres on to the SF90 and the Lusso. That yep. is happening today, so yep. Ferrari theme. And Tim T, something that we were, or he tried to collect last time. He did. Couldn't collect because the MSRT Transit just wasn't tall enough. So we've organised a surprise. We have another vehicle landing today at the Schmuseum, which we'll then be using to go and collect something else, once again, very Ferrari themed. And I guess we should, probably should point out that currently we have quite a lot of cars under cover at the moment because they're currently clean and we want them to stay that way whilst the building work is going on. Yep. Now, we have a kitchen to go and let the guys in. But before we do that... We probably should just throw back a little bit because there is now an SF90 here and there is now a Lusso over there, which wasn't here the other day because we dropped them off for service. So I guess we should rewind to collecting those and then let's go and get our kitchen. We are back at Ferrari service, and here I've got the documentation for the Ferrari SF90, which has had its annual service, all is good, and that's ready to go back home. And at some point, I guess, given the weather, we're gonna to wanna to put that back on its summer tires at some point soon. Yeah, whether that's in this video that you're watching, but we've rewinded back in, it's all complicated. Whether that's in this I or in a future I think it'll be at some point in the future, because the, the Lusso, we have some spare wheels with the summers on. These have to actually be physically swapped onto these wheels. So I think that's a trip to whoops at some point in the future. However, should we show what we're driving in at the moment? We are not in any of the Schmimobiles or team vehicles that you are aware of. We are currently in this. A Skoda Enyaq. It's electric. It is. So I don't know too much about it other than it's an EV. It's obviously sort of a family sized SUV, I guess we call it. It is. And so far, the driving I've done it, which hasn't been much, is very nice. Back on the road, out in the Enyaq, Brad is behind the wheel. Can we show this interior, first of all? I look mean, how lovely. I, I feel like they've already got a glimpse, but yeah, if we just have a look around, you guys will see this stunning shade of brown interior, which just works. And I really like it. We've got a metallic black paintwork with a brown interior. With yeah. Sort of diamond cut wheels it's just a nice combo it's it, a classy looking car it really is it really is and it's again i think this is why this is a prime example right of why you don't necessarily say no to things because if tom had had his way he would have just gone it's electric we don't want it and we'd have missed out on yeah. so many other cool features that this car does have obviously carplay and all your other settings in there um here's the seat here's the steering wheel it's good it's a good car very, very good car. But anyway, I guess we should get to Ferrari, pick up the Lusso this time, and then head back to base. There is a very nice SVJ over here in a sort of satin, metallic white paint, bronze wheels, looking very cool over this way. And then here we have the Lusso, once again, sparkling clean. Thank you to the, the team at HRO and for cleaning it up for us as well. But this has now had its service as well. And obviously we have the winter tyres, which Tom mentioned, which I believe we are going to be swapping over maybe later in the video. Um, but that will happen at some point fairly soon because we are getting, as you can see, better weather, sun's out and things, which is great. But yeah, we'll get this back to the Schmuseum and then we'll jump back to the present day. Now back to the present day, you find me in the back of another van unloading our kitchen with Martin here. So I don't think we're gonna show too much because Tim will be back at some point and I think he wants to do a full reveal of exactly what we've got, but you certainly have a bit of a clue going on. Bit of an idea, yeah. There's more to show, colors, doors and all of that stuff. And fittings and things, but we'll get to that at some point when, like you say, Tim's back. But for now, I guess we should keep unloading and then probably get the SF90 and head over to Whoops. Yes, so we can go and get the uh, Cup 2s back on those and yeah. I am strong man! Kitchen is now fully unloaded. Martin is just organizing some of this a little bit. And I mean, just taking a little sneak peek at our worktops here. No, no, no. I'm looking, not you lot. I've, I've seen it actually, because I went obviously yes. with Tim and Martin to 
You did. Can we you say spec up a kitchen? Because that's yeah. kind of the process. You went to the kitchen atelier and spec the kitchen with Martin. Instead of talking about it, give us a hand to move it, hey. That'd be a brilliant idea, don't you think? Okay, we'll come back to you guys in a moment and then we'll be jumping in the SF90 to head over to the guys at Whoops and get the summer tires on. And we're taking the MSRT? Why not? Well, we have to get the tires there somewhere, don't we? They're not going to fit in there. Let's oh, take the MSRT. Oh. <laughs> We've upset him now. Let's go. We've just pulled the transit in, so that is ready to go. And then obviously now we've got to come to our tire rack and figure out where we put the summers for the SF90. I think it's these. Yeah? I think so. Oh, or are they? Uh, these, these look far too worn. No, hang on. I'm pointing at this, but that is a wheel. That's, That's literally, literally a wheel. So I reckon, hang on a second. Cheers, Martin. We did say at the start of the video he needs to go back to work, and he, he has. He has, to so be fair. I think it's these, because they look far too worn. Those are the GT Oh, yes, it's GT Black Series, yeah. Those are clearly some winters. Those are Mine. yours and way too narrow. Those, I think, are on wheels. Yep, oh. those are the Lussos. Lusso. So they're going on later. Yep, we'll need to get those on Possibly later on. Probably we need to get these down. Yeah, so I guess we start from this one here. And that definitely is the one, because we've got the sort of sound deadening foam inside. Oh, we have that on these as well. Yeah. Oh, not just the GT500. No. Ah, a Ferrari. so it must be a Ferrari thing, because we've obviously put Ferrari Cup 2s on the Mustang. Yeah. So it must be a Ferrari thing. Interesting. Well, huh. anyway, you take that one. I'll you get another one. Let's okay. get the van loaded up, and then let's jump into a cold start. Out comes the SF90. Ready to hit the road. Oh. <laughs> Standard. Clear alarm. Focus. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Clear alarm loves to go off when this or other cars turn on. And then in the back of the transit, we have the tyres. So yeah, let's hit the road. We've made it to Whoops and it's chaos out here. They've got a car park full of cars. That one's in for a front end repair. However, we also have an MSRT transit full of Cup 2s. So I guess we need to unload these, leave these and the SF90 with the guys at Whoops. And then we're gonna jump back in the MSRT, back to the barn for our skip delivery which could be at any point this morning. So we probably do need to get back could be at any to point. Sure we're there. We then also, in about an hour's time, have our new loan vehicle delivery, do we, do we press tease vehicle. It? Shall we tease what brand it is? Well, we, what we can say is obviously, we're going to collect something that Tim attempted to collect in this and didn't fit. So it's bigger than this. Okay, that's, yeah, that's a good first clue. Bigger yeah. than our transit custom. And if you know me, you won't be expecting the powertrain. Anyway, let's get this unloaded. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kept me thinking there for a second. That was my brain working. Well, if it gets you thinking, I'm hoping it keeps these no, guys I'm, thinking for a I'm while. No, I'm just stupid and didn't clock. <laughs> we have arrived back from Whoops in the MSRT. And now, Martin, it's time for a bit of an update, I think, because the last thing we showed, I don't think we had the front face sort of painted in white. And there's quite a few other bits that have been done since the last video. Yes, um, I would say that all the top panels have been fitted taped and jointed, sanded, a coat of paint. Also, all of the skirting boards gone on. And this morning, we just finished off all the aluminium framework for the glazing that's gonna form the front of the offices. Yes, so that is this sort of like framework here, which you've put some tape because you've said that neither of us, or none of somebody us- Somebody will walk through. through it, somebody will stand on the track, somebody will then get punched in the face. <laughs> Don't walk through there, Tom. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't walk through there. See, look, he's gonna go through there now and break something. We love him. Um, anyway. So yes, a few obstacles, just to make it even harder for you to walk on the track. And if you do manage to walk on that track, yes, I'm looking at you, Tom. Now, nah, oh, there will be trouble. Oh, I see. Yep, there will yep. be trouble. The hammer that was used to check your table will be used to check your face. I mean, pretty solid. <laughs> you won't like that. Um, other things that have been done, the final sockets have been cut into the walls and we've started to install oh, the yeah, so units. I can show this piece that you've put in because we showed it in the back of the van when it arrived, but here is our first piece of kitchen furniture. Kitchen cabinetry. Cabinetry, we call that's it the cabinetry? word. That's cabinetry. And you'll note the plus. ceiling's in. Yes, that's something we haven't shown. Actually, we have the full suspended ceiling now up in place. Yep, that'll have spotlights in when the electrician comes back. Plans for toilets are, I think, well underway, so it's a bit dark in here. But yeah, we're... so the next step is all of this needs to be cleared out. We've got a plasterboard skip coming this morning. That makes uh, life easy. Get rid of all this. 
And then all the services for the plumbing and drainage will go in behind this wall and we'll form another wall in front of it. So all those are hidden in there. And then there will have a toilet here and another toilet and shower over there. Happy days. And I guess one final thing before I let you crack on and actually work is obviously you did the stub work over the far side. We've also started to do some up this side, which will form some of the storage room that we have upstairs, but that is more to come, I guess, over the coming weeks and months that you're here. Correct. Yeah, another load of material being delivered next week. All the timbers for upstairs, offices to form, back wall to build, these storage rooms to build, lots to build. Sounds like lots you're going to be busy. Be very, very busy. You love being here. That's I lovely. love it. Yeah. This is my second favourite place, apart from being at home. Oh, that's, that's, we'll take that. Thank you very much. Shall I crack on now? Yes, please. Next up is summer tyre time for the Lusso. So I have the key here. We're going to get this one open. We're going to get the cover off of this one. And then we'll get that moved over there somewhere so that Brad can get that on the jacks. And we can get these wheels off, get the summers on, and this one is all good for the rest of the year. Yep, that. <laughs> now the Lusso's parked up in place, I've uh, just got to talk it out and the jack and the next stand ready to get this side jacked up. Um, essentially, we're going to get it all in position, crack the nuts, lift the car. Lifting this is quite rigid, we'll lift up the whole car, which then means I can pop the stand under the back jacking point and then we're supported front and rear. Wheel off, wheel off, grab the wheel off of the rack, swap them straight over, sun was on, and then same thing for the other side. So, yeah, hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. Then we can show you what has turned up, um, the vehicle, if you can hear me. Sorry about the background noise, that is Martin. Um, our skier should be arriving hopefully any minute. It's not here currently, but I guess we can chase it up and see. But yeah, pretty productive day so far and plenty more to get done. Okay, we have Zoom. Professional. Now that we have the Lusso already back on its summer ties, it's time for us to go and collect the Ferrari SF90 from the guys at Whoops. But before we do, our new loan vehicle is here. Yeah, I think we should come straight over and show the mystery vehicle. Obviously, I've said the next plan is to go and pick up the mystery item. Yep. But for the purpose, we have the brand new Ford e-Transit. All electric e-Transit. Yeah, true. Actually, everything I need to say is literally on the side. It's part of the Ford Pro range. It's the new all electric e-Transit, a full-size transit inside this museum. As I said earlier on, if you know me, the type of powertrain will be very unexpected. Now, I'm going to be completely honest and say I've popped out in this before bringing it in. And I even took Martin for a quick ride. We went to the building merchants to get some supplies. What a fantastic machine. I, I've always been very against EVs, but I think it's I'm against performance EVs. And I've always kind of highlighted that I think there's a time and a place for them. This might be the time and the place. This is the first time I've heard you talk so highly about an EV. I think it's brilliant. I mean, the, the range, if you're doing really long distance stuff, the range is going to be a bit of a, an issue. I think we've worked out it's got about 170 miles real world range. But if you're doing courier work in London or something like that, or you're not doing 200 miles plus a day, it's perfect. It's silent. You hear nothing. It, it's almost like being back in the Audi S8. Oh, okay. And and, okay, I'm slightly... Hang on, where, where are we going? We've got a few things to show on this. Let's, we do, have, let's do the rear first. Let's go into the... Hang would on. help if it I was... Have the oh, key. you have the key. There, there we, we go. go. So, if we come in the back here... All nicely lined. How lovely is this? Got the lovely wood panelling, and then... Let's go round the back. Let, let's come round the back back. We'll open this one up from here. We've got reverse camera here. Oh, no, We've that's got, mirror camera, isn't sorry, it? Sorry, mirror, mirror camera. Cam. Reverse camera there as well. With cameras all around on this, this thing. This is a cool feature. This is the cool feature. So in our MSRT Transit, we have a plug socket up by the, by the handbrake, which this has one there as well, but that's 150 watts. So that's something like Brad's laptop or the camera. You could charge that on the go off of your 230 volt socket. But here, 2.3 kilowatts. And we tested this earlier on by plugging our vacuum in, which is a couple thousand watts. So 
or it's about a thousand, something like that. So that, yeah. that powered just fine off of there. The thing I like back here as well, obviously, you know, you might be working late at night. Yeah. You might not be able to see. Handy little button on there, which there we go. Press that one. turns on that and lights up, as you can see on the floor, if you turn it back off. Yeah. There we, oh, hang on. Uh, there we go. There we go. It makes quite a big difference. It does. What so you can see. Depending on what you do for a living, if you're someone that has a trade and works with tools, you've got all the room in the world to store them. You've got somewhere to plug them in and you've got somewhere to light up your workspace at yeah. the back as well. Can but I say, I love all of the blue accents. I'm going to come around the front as well. So we've got yep. blue strip on the rear. I'm going to go this side. Yeah, we can't see you currently. Yeah. Around to the front, blue strips across the sort of front grill, which is really cool. This is where you charge. So you pop open the front and you can pull out the flaps and pop your in your fast charger. charger there as well at the bottom, which yep. just uh, is, flaps open. This is how you monitor. So it basically goes through like 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100, and you press that to release it. So that's pretty nice on the front and interior wise. It's actually updated from the MSRT that we're running. It is. If we come and hop in here, I have to be very careful not to open the door into a Ferrari 812, but yeah. let me come and slide on in here. The screen is absolutely huge. Let me, uh, oh, sorry, I thought that we'd had some music there. But if we go ahead and, I mean, let's just turn it on. Yeah, let's start it. Ready for that diesel roar? Oh, music. There we go. Killed that one. Sorry, YouTube. But that was the only thing we could hear because that's all that happens when you turn on. It is. Um, this is it. It's on. It's ready to go. The screen is absolutely phenomenal. You've got so much stuff here. Here we've got, look at this. Can I just point out? I said I've been for a drive. Look at my eco behavior. Very good. We're, we're going to have to monitor you with that. <laughs> yes, yes. And that is, and again, lovely, useful feature. We like to say we've got the plug socket down here as well, yep, which this, is just there. This is how you pop it into gear, park, reverse. We've Very got Ford GT esque. Yeah, it, I mean, it's exactly the same as the Ford GT, and so is, is the key. The key. So now we have three keys that look like this Ford GT, yep. GT400, and, and e Transit. E Transit. And here we've got L mode, which is basically your. Uh, one pedal driving mode which works fantastically so you basically never need to use the brakes at all who would have ever thought that there would be an ev that tom likes we have just found an artura out on the road that's i think the first one i've actually seen rolling out on the road on Agreed. his phone as you do this is a really lovely place to be it is it is i'm glad you're seeing what i was saying because obviously you've not this is your first time in the e-transit yeah i mean so we've spent i guess the last year driving a few different types of vans you know we've had the transit custom from msrt long wheelbase and short wheelbase and then we have we've driven the luton which was obviously yeah. huge and didn't have many tech features if anything at all like it was as basic as it comes and then like we said this thing has literally everything is comfortable quiet and actually very well refined and the screen like the first thing martin said because obviously he has the same van as we do not the msrt but he has the same shape van that we have and the first thing he pointed out was just how much nicer the infotainment screen is yeah the screen on here is bigger just it looks more premium it does it really does this this doesn't look like something you would find in what i'm going to call a builder's van hello car in front <laughs> <laughs> and hello 360 and everyone around us it this, is brilliant yeah th this is a really nice bit of kit i can understand yeah. why companies would want to start using something like this especially for in town yeah i, th I think the key thing as we've said, is going to be range for people. If you're if you're not doing more than about 170 miles a day, or you're stopping at some point through the day and have the ability to charge, because this will do a fast charge from 15 to 80 percent in I think about half an hour. Yeah, 34 minutes, I think. You something said. like that. So it's you know it's not even that impractical if you do need to charge it, because yes, refilling with fuel is you know five or ten minutes, but it, it's only double that again if you're stopping somewhere for lunch. You're stopping for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour anyway. So at that point, you don't even notice. You just get back in and it's recharged. It does make sense. So now we're about to arrive at Whoops. They're also just around the corner from here. We made the mistake um, of forgetting some ratchet straps for the mystery item we're collecting. So basically the plan is you're going to go into Whoops, sort yep. out getting the Ferrari out and head over towards where we're collecting that from. Correct. I'm going to head back to the barn and pick up our ratchet straps. Um, I, I think this is one that we probably want to, this is Martin. Martin so screwdriver. Depending on what he says, we're even going to cut this clip now or yep. you can hear what he says. Hello, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Bye. Bye. That sounds like we've just had a skip delivered. It does. I don't know whether you would have seen or heard that phone call or whether that would have been cut out because probably. there was some words used that maybe aren't suitable for YouTube. But we are now pulling in 
to the guys at Whoops, we'll fix it. So this is where I say bye to you. You go yep. and get the SF90 sorted out, and then I will meet you a little bit later with some ratchet straps to go and pick up location. mystery item from mystery location. Sounds fun. Yes. We've made it. We're here with the E-Transit, with the Ferrari SF90, which is very on theme. And it's also now on summer tires. It is. And I can't lie, I, when I first drove it on the winters, I couldn't really tell the difference. But having now gone back to the Cup 2s, wow, this turns in so much better. So, yeah, thankful to have those back. And I'm sure Tim will be as well. Yeah. More importantly, though, the Transit now has something in the back of it, all strapped down with the ratchet straps. Something we're very not, Ferrari related. Yeah, we're not going to show you right now. We're going to get back, get it unloaded, because it's not easy to unload. And once it's in the barn, in the middle, we'll get it out and show you guys. Do we tease them? Do we give them a clue? Uh, go on, you give them a clue. The only clue I can think of probably gives it away, but I'm just going to say one thing and we'll cut and head back to the barn. GR Yaris. I'm in the transit, which is empty, as you can see, because we've already unloaded what it was. Now, I just want to quickly say, Brad, we've just come back. Does that give a bit of a clue as how we got things in and out? Yeah, we needed, we needed, well, the guys where we collected it from luckily had a ramp. We didn't, but we've got some old floorboards from up on top of the mezzanine, so we use those. Yeah. But go on, anyway, you were about to say. Yeah, I was going to say, so we came back and I followed you in e-drive mode, which is very unusual of me, I appreciate, but maybe the transit is turning me. I was in e-drive mode as well. Funny that. That's the only mode I can be in. But I had a realisation as we were driving down the road. In e-drive mode, that has about 200 horsepower. This has 269. So at that moment in time, you had more power than an SF90. Oh, well, sorry, SF90. That's uh, rather unfortunate that I had more power than you, but I did. Where have you gone? Oh, here he goes. I'm gone. I'm Outside here. Outside door. So because... we need to talk about the link. So we said the first clue yep. is GI Yaris. Shall we explain what that is? I'm What's sure anyone with? of mine and Tim's age, it's given it away already. But when we got the GR Yaris, we obviously put the Castrol livery on it. And then we went and acquired the Sega Rally arcade machine to match with that. Because that was the inspiration for Tim and I doing the Castrol livery. I think uh, Martin. I think, I think he'd like to leave. Hello, Martin. <laughs> he said, let me out. I will do. We'll be back. Bye, Martin. As I was saying, the, when, when Tim and I, we decided to put the Castrol livery on the GR Yaris, it was ultimately because we grew up playing Sega Rally with the Celica, with that livery. So I, I'm sure we've waffled on for long enough now, and I'm sure you guys have already guessed it. Sega Rally, arcade machine, Ferrari theme day. We have acquired a Ferrari F355 Challenge arcade machine to live here at this museum alongside Which, the Sega Rally. How cool is this? Once again, this was... Like, when we got that, we spoke about the 355 Challenge being one of the games that we all played in the arcades, probably in Hollywood Bowl for a lot of people, Tim and my age. But, um, yeah, this has brought so much back. Now, we do have to acquire a little bit of wiring for it. And this one, this one's incredibly heavy. So the Sega unit that we've got has actually had a bit of modernisation and it's had the old CRTs replaced with flat screens. These still have the CRTs and well, they, they weigh heavy. a lot. Yeah. Luckily, we had a helping hand at the end where we collected it. Yes. And then we had Martin and Webbo's help to basically wheel it down our makeshift ramp yeah. into here. But this is so cool. And I, it's a shame actually for me because I'm younger than both Tim and yourself. And, yeah. and I don't feel like I actually got to experience these in the full way that you guys would have. But now you can, right? As soon and as we get this up and running, you can, and here's the best thing about it, right? As with all Ferraris, one thing that you're gonna to need to do when you jump in is turn off the traction control. Yes, well, not just that. You can turn off your stability control, your traction control, your ABS, and your IBS. And in case you don't wanna drive it in automatic, you've got some paddles on there as well. And just saying, they're very McLaren-esque in that you can go up and down oh, from yeah. either side. And this, we've this still got epic. the cash box on this one. Again, the, the Sega was converted so that that was all removed and it was just a case of turn it on and it works. So that's something we're going to have to achieve with this. Part of me thinks we should go and do the flat screen conversion and do the modernization, but equally there's another part of me that thinks for the nostalgia, for the, for the true experience... Can we get the CRT to work? Do they, they might or already do work. Do they work? We yeah, need, true. Actually, we, need we, don't, to, we don't know. We haven't we need tried to power this. Them up. So I guess if we come around the back quickly, Brad, we can have a quick look, but... Again, the Sega has been modernized, so it just has a power plug that goes in, whereas here we can see there's 
some various. plugs that we're gonna gonna need before we can get this up and running. Oh, this, this is just so cool though, and actually even more so that we literally have both of the far, both of Tim's Ferraris, I guess, literally right here. Lusso parts at the back. But then we do also have the Team Skookum 812 yeah. as well. This is literally surrounded by Ferraris right now. So cool, and this this shot. Here, bear with me. Let me come out of your way this for that shot. SF90 with this in front is, is epic. As you would have seen in the thumbnail, something along this, these lines. Yeah, so epic. I can't wait to figure out what we need to do to it and get it up and running and yeah. be able to play on it, basically. Sorry, Tim, no more work's being done. We're going to be on either the F355 arcade or the Sega Rally, probably from now on. One or the other. And yeah, I mean, we do need to fire that up because we haven't turned it on in a while. And I think having these two next to each other, once we get this top unit working as well and have it lit up like we have the Sega Rally, this is just going to be so cool. I mean, it's the ultimate kid's toy room is what Tim is building. We've got the, yeah. the children's carpets. Well, I say children's carpets, I picked them, but they, they look amazing with the Lego, the model car collection, the arcade machines. This is all coming together. And all of the big cars as and, well, And obviously. all of the cars. This is all coming together as the biggest toy room I've ever been in. Yeah, this has been one hectic day yes. the skip is outside and martin has already filled us up should we show a quick bit of that yeah maybe maybe we'll just show you guys a skip with some rubbish in it to prove it did happen there's you've seen the overlays of that there you go so um, that's that obviously we've had loads of work going on here um can i give a little brief sneak preview in here just a that's all you're going to get from inside the kitchenette we'll come back and show more of that in future episodes of the build and yeah lots of Nice finishing touches, I guess, here. More bits being painted and sanded and skirting on. Um, do you know yeah. what you've just done as well? You've done what we love to do on this channel. And swinging the camera around, you've given an Easter egg and oh, actually boy. showed something else. So if the guys have seen it, congratulations. I'm not going to say what. No, I'm asking for myself. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'll tell you off camera. Give me a nod. Was it that? No. No. Okay. And then I just but walk anyway, around. I'll tell you off camera, but you have, there's, there's another Easter egg in this video, guys. Just comment down below. Can you see it? So I guess to finish up today's video, because we are pretty much there, I believe, SF90 is obviously now on to some summer tires. Thank you, Whoops Will Fix It, as always, for helping us out. Yep. Lusso is now done, thanks to us. Thanks to you for getting that one well, jacked up and making sure that Tom didn't put a jack straight through the set. Yeah, you're welcome, Tim. Um, and obviously a huge thank you to Ford, who have sent out for a very short-term loan their Ford, I guess we're gonna say it again, new all-electric e-transit, which has been honestly incredible. And I guess I owe a thank you to Ford because you have made an EV that I like. Yeah, that's... Shock. Yeah, that's a, that is a bold statement. I guess for now, we'll probably get this put on charge on RC Tech, charged on connected, and then we can get some more power in it. And in case we need to use it over the coming days before it does go back, we're able to because we have some charge in it. And to be fair, it's still got plenty of range left and we've done quite a bit of driving today. Yep. Yep. And just for anyone who is interested, the 99% eco driving didn't stay at 99%, but it didn't drop too much at all. No. As it happened, this is, yeah, it's fantastic. And I think we've worked out the real world range is probably 170 to 190 miles, depending on how you're using it. I think we did a rough calculation on the road based off of what we were getting there and then. And it was the equivalent of about 70 miles per gallon. Yeah. How accurate that is, we can't really say, but that's the number that we managed to find. So whether it's good or true i don't know but yeah, yeah. But for something that weighs as much as it is as big as it is as unaerodynamic as it is i think that's really really impressive yeah so yeah once again thank you ford is that everything we've done today are we now ticked off can we head home and finish this video well no because we've got to park the transit back up put that away park well, the sf90 park the lusso put that away somewhere then we can head home but i guess we can wrap up now go and do all of that and yeah Hopefully you guys have enjoyed coming along on what has been a hectic day and, well, seeing the new Ferrari 355 Challenge arcade machine. But for now, I guess until next time.